Holy Chapel service will start in...
worship, to worship, worship and adore him. His name with my hands, with my hands lifted high. Let me sigh and rejoice, we sing glory to his name. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, worship and adore him. Put those hands together. All over the building. Here we go. Glory. Glory. Give it glory. Glory. Give it glory. Glory. Give it praise. Glory. Give it glory. Glory. Give it glory. Glory. the church say amen. Amen. God is good all the time, right? All the time. He's certainly worthy of our praise. Yeah. He's done so much for all of us. He's given us a brand new year. What you gonna do with it? Amen. amen. Let us look now to our responsive reading, Psalms number 122. I hope you have your Bibles. If you do, please turn there and say amen when you found it. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brother and companion's sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for we have everlasting life. Everybody, one more time for Jesus. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. Are not ashamed of the gospel oh Lord. of Jesus Christ. Oh. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have everlasting, everlasting life. All right. Somebody in the house that realizes how good the Lord has been, why don't you say thank you? Come on, somebody knows that he's been better than that, and you ought to say thank you. Thank you. I got a feeling, I got a feeling that somebody received a hallelujah praise along the way. You ought to lift those holy hands and give it to the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor, look at your neighbor right now and say, neighbor, 
I love you. There's not a thing in the world you can do about it. Turn to another and share that same sentiment by saying, neighbor, I love you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, well, now No Oh, well, now When you bow down Oh, Lord Oh, please Don't you forget Pray for me Everyone, your 
me. So instead of thinking about the things you do not have, thank God for what you have and what you have left. I know that you will find you really been blessed because God has been so good to you. Do you believe that God will open and open up a window from heaven and pour you out, pour you out a blessing? Yes, God will open, open, open up a window from heaven and pour you out, pour you out a blessing. The God will open, open up a window. Many of you are thankful today that you are still here. Oh, God has allowed you in 2024 to see a new year. Yes. Oh, they said I wouldn't make it, but I'm here today. I know somebody can relate to that. Amen. Oh, I'm still here. Yes, Lord, thank you. Heartaches. I've had my share of heartaches, but I'm still here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trouble. I've seen my share of troubles, but I'm still here. Ha. Bruises. I've taken my lumps and bruises, but I'm still here. Yes, I am. Loneliness. I've had my share of loneliness, but I'm still here. Oh, listen now. Through it all, I made it through another day's journey. Always there, 
No matter what came my way, I felt the presence of Him in my time of need. Standing right there just to see about me. Yeah, Ooh, I made it. Another day's journey. Well, God kept me here. Oh, yes, He did. I made it. It's by the grace of God, I made it. They said I wouldn't be here today, but I'm here. You're here today. Oh, yeah. I made it through another day's journey.
give an honor to God. Much love and respect to Pastor Thomas, to all the officers, members, visitors, friends, everybody under the sound of my voice. I thank God for allowing me to be able to stand before you this morning. My voice is a little different because I recently had the flu, but he brought me through that. And God is good. It's not a small thing to, for God to choose you to do anything. Whatever he chooses you to do, he never makes a mistake. I do have a word this morning. It's a blessing to be able to stand here and talk to God's people about God's word. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Matthew, chapter 25. Matthew 25, we're going to be reading uh, a few verses. Uh, we're going to be starting at verse 31, and we're going to go all the way down to the end of that chapter. It reads as follows. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and, be and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee being hungry and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw, we, when saw thee as a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw ye thee sick? or in prison, and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he see, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, and into the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. <coughs> Excuse me. For I was hungry, and you, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer, saying, Lord, when saw ye the in hunger, and thirst, or a stranger, naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, ye have done it unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. I want to use a very simple uh, subject, the unusual king. Now, we, 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 we know what a king is. Well, maybe we don't know, huh? Well, well a king, a king is, 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 is a male monarch who reigns forever, reigns for his entire life. He's also a sovereign ruler, uh, generally for life. 
But we, in our dissertation of life, use the word king rather loosely. You know, we, 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 uh, we call the lion the king of the jungle. But, but he's not really the king of the jungle. There, 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 is, there, there was a, a movie called King Kong, a big monkey. So, so, we, so we throw that word around quite a bit. Some of you listen to a, used to listen to a, a, a singer who sang very well called him Net King Cole. We said a lot of things about the king. I had a friend once. He was an older fellow. Some of you may remember him. He had a business. He was a Jewish fellow, and he had a business. His name was Al Greenwood, and he sold bedspreads. And he made, made a lot of money, but he had commercials on the television, and he would always say, I am the king. And I used to wonder why. He didn't even sell the most best bread. But he called himself the king. Coming up as a young boy, and many of the young boys my age, we loved cowboy movies, and they used to tell us that Roy Rogers was the king of the cowboys. I don't know about that, but I do remember, I do remember, and some of you may not go back far enough to remember the soap opera days. There really was a soap opera days in the early 50s, late 40s and early 50s, where uh, you didn't have television, but we did have radio. And there were radio programs on all day. I used to listen all day Saturday morning to those radio programs. And one of those programs was a, called Sky King. It was a, a man that had a, a superhero that flew around in an airplane, and he saved and did things for people. He, they call him a king, but I don't know about him being a king. Then, 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 in the world, even today, you have organized crime where some of these mob bosses are called a king king. I don't know whether he's a king or not, but that's what they call him. And, and, and then there is uh, the fellow who had the birthday tomorrow, Martin Luther King. So we use King in a lot of, a lot of different instances. When you, when you get ready to move into your house and you're buying furniture, you look for a king-sized bed. I, 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 I have one. I, I, it didn't come from a king. It's just a big bed. And, and so what we do is when things are big, we want to call it king. But, but, but there really is kings, and there really were kings. And, and, and so I, 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 I looked trying to find out about kings. And the very first mention in scripture in regard to what we are talking about can be found in the 10th chapter of Genesis uh, when it talks about a kingdom. Of course, you can't have a kingdom unless you got a king. And as I, as I looked, I read and I saw that it talked about a man named Nimrod who was a great warrior. And it talks about his kingdom uh, came about as a result of the Tower of Babel. And, and we know that we got Black History Month coming up, shortest month of the year, and we try to recognize our history. But our history goes way back. And the scripture tells me that Nimrod's father was named Cush. Everybody agreed that Cush mean black. So if Cush was black and he had a son, don't care how who the mama was, he was part black. 
So, 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 and, and, and so he also, if he had a kingdom, then he had to be a king. The next mention of king in scripture has to do with Pharaoh in Egypt. And so, just let me tell you that there have been a lot of kings. All through history, there were kings. Uh, um, some notable kings. There was a king named Bera. He was the king of Sodom. There was a king named Bersha. He was the king of Gomorrah. During the time of the kings, they didn't nation fought against nation and king fought against king. And kings lived and kings died. Kings had armies and soldiers and I look back to see that a king's life was a very special life. Kings experienced, in most cases, the finer things of life. The kings ate the best of food and wore the best of clothing. And they generally had, were waited on in some instances, hand and foot. And most kings had a queen. Amen. I remember reading in the Sunday school lesson not a long time ago about a king called Ahasuerus. And King Ahasuerus had a queen, her name was Vashti. And the life of a king was such that, and in this particular case, that uh, his head got big and he wanted to show off what he had. And so he passed a rule that they that, that they're going to have a party, and he was going to ask Vashti to come to the party. He invited all these people so he could show her off, and Vashti said no. She didn't go. And as a result of that, he passed an evening where they sent for all of the young virgin women in the country and had them come to the king, and they went through a process of of, of, of cleaning and all, and they were brought before the king for him to make a choice because he decided that he didn't want Vashti to be king, queen anymore. So we see then that kings can do pretty much what they want to do. Uh, 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 that's not always a good thing. So Vashti, Vashti refused and she was no longer the king, and they had another beautiful young Jewish lady named Esther. And Esther was the one that was chosen uh, to take the place of Vashti. So you see, kings had power, and you didn't want to upset the king. As a matter of fact, the way it was set up, you couldn't even go in and visit the king when you did just walk in and talk to the king. You know, I, I, I can go in and catch pastor if he's sitting in there. But you can't walk in to see the king. He has bodyguards. He has people looking out for him. Uh, his food is monitored. Matter of fact, they check the things that they eat and drink even before they drink it so that nothing happens to the king. For drinking purposes, some of you know that in England, they had that, taken that to the highest level, and there was a group of people called beef eaters. And they would taste the beef before the king ate the beef to make sure that the king did not get poisoned with anything. They also drank. And there's a drink on the market now called beef eaters. got nothing to do with beef. <laughs> Amen. But, but that's the life that a king had. And most of the kings were that way. But we find out when we look at kings that all kings weren't good. Some kings were bad kings. Well, there is 
a king that was good. And, and, and he, he, he is the king of kings. If, if, if there is a king, there's another king that's above that king. He is the king. So, 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 as a matter of fact, that if a king had a queen and they had children, the children were princes and they were in line to reign as the king when their time came, which created problems in, in the royal family. We know even today there is a royal family and there are some problems with the royal family. There was a young prince married a black lady and there was much turmoil. And then pretty soon we found out from looking at the news that one of the princes has a reputation of dealing with one of the, one of the evil persons of our time. A fellow named Epstein. Epstein, y'all know, you, saw, you see the news, but that king was involved with that. So we see then that the kings didn't always live uh, the way that they should. In, in, in 2 Kings uh, chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, it talks about uh, uh, a king named Joash who did evil in the sight of God. Now, keep in mind that these kings are figures of authority and heads of governments of their particular kingdom or empire. They weren't all God. Because certainly Joash, even though God allowed them to be king, they still didn't do what they should do. Some kings did good, and some kings did evil. There, there, there was a king called Amaziah, recorded in 2 Kings 18 and 3, who did right. After him, there was a king in 2 Kings 17 and 2 named Hosea, who did evil. Then there was another king named Manasseh, did evil. It was recorded in 2 Kings 21 and 2. Jehoahaz did evil. Then there was a king called Saul. Saul, the first king of Israel, was rejected by God, and they had to get another king. You can find out about all about King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 15. But the next king they had was a king named David. David was king. But David had some issues. David was not perfect. Amen. David did some things. But he wound up finding favor in God. Because the scripture tells us that he was after God's own heart. And so it is that as a result of his lifestyle and the things that he had done, he, uh, uh, when it came to the building of the temple, he couldn't build the temple because he had blood on his hand. But his son, Solomon, built the temple. Solomon was another king. Now, now, Solomon started out all right, but in his old age, he kind of went south a bit because he, got, he, he had this affinity for strange women. And so that kind of tainted his rule. And so it is today. There's a tainted image, even in England, because of Charles. So you see, kings, even though they have lots of power, all the kings that ever lived, their reign ended. Some were killed, some just died. But they were kings. And that position was put in place 
because God honors authority. And so when God puts those people in authority, our obligation is to obey those individuals that are put in authority. Amen. Now, now you know, we, 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 the same way it is with the church. God has put a pastor in charge of the church. He is the leader of the church. And those that members of the church, their job is to follow the leader. Amen? God is leading him, and then God is expecting you to follow. And so that's the way life is because God, you remember God was the first king. God was king. God is the one that's in power, the one that has all the authority. And God has all the authority because he made everything. The scripture said the earth is the Lord's, and whatever it is full of belongs to him. But there is an unusual king. All of the kings that I talked about, there's so many, I didn't mention many because there was a bunch of kings. And, 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 you know, they all wanted to reign, and then they all wanted their son to reign in this place and, and, and keep it in the fact. That's the way it was. You, you, you didn't get to be voted into being the king. It, it came about sort of like a birthright. The son of the king is next in line to be heir. But there is, and, and so, so, you know, the, there is a, unusual king. The unusual king is different from all the other kings. You know, when we say unusual, that means uncommon. That means he ain't like everybody else. You, you can't go and find him anywhere. It's very rare. Well, you know, rare not even, is not even the word because rare just means it ain't many of them. But there's only one king of kings. There's only one Lord of Lords. He is the unusual king. Well, what's unusual about him? Well, he was born a king. We just got through celebrating his birthday. We sang songs about the baby Jesus, born the king of Israel, born the king of angels. And the words of the song said, go, let's adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Well, all the other kings mostly were born in the palace, the home of the king, the dwelling place of the king. And it was posh. It was big. They even had king size beds. <laughs> they had attendants taking care of them. They had cooks and people that cleaned and did everything. They didn't have to do no work. Many of them, most of them, their biggest time was just sitting on the throne. Amen? Well, this king, there was a king. This unusual king was not born in the castle. This unusual king was born in the state. There were no attendants, but there were animals around. Amen. Not only that, his mother wasn't a queen. Very different and very unusual from all the other kings. He never dressed in fine silk or linen. He did not dine like the other kings dined with royal food. He, he didn't have a signet ring. Now somebody might not know what a signet ring is. Many of the kings, when they when they gave correspondence, they had writings and letters and things like that. They would seal up the letter with a glob, a glob of wax, and then they had a ring with an emblem on it that they would press that emblem in there, and when you give that to somebody, that emblem better not be messed up. Nobody had opened it. If that, it was your life. You didn't have that. He wasn't even treated like royalty. He didn't wear a long robe. 
magnifying slippers. He didn't even have a crown on his head. Amen. But he was really a royal king because he was son of the living God. You can't get any better than that. And so this, this, this king, uh, this unusual king, uh, came and he, did, he started ministry to people. He came and he healed people. He came and he taught people. He came and he fed people. He came and he healed people. He came and he saved people. He ultimately raised people from the dead. Ain't no other king like that. Solomon in all his glory <coughs> raised nobody from the dead. All of the kings that reign are still dead. But this unusual king, this unusual king got in trouble with the establishment. They accused him of doing things that he hadn't done, saying things that he actually hadn't said. And so this unusual king was arrested one evening. Ah, they had a stool pigeon that pointed him out, told the folk who he was. Now, we have to remember that this king, you know, he, he, he almost... Ah, is without description because not many people knew what he looked like. Unlike his predecessor king, uh, uh, Saul, uh, uh, who was tall and dark and handsome. And he said he stood head and shoulders above everybody else. <coughs> but he was not the king of kings. But this king, this king, came in, you know, many of the kings would be go around in a chariot pulled by horses, and they would go to and fro and come into the city. When they went to war and came back, the king would be riding on his throne and they're doing things to the crowd and all of that. But this unusual king never rode in a chariot didn't have any horses. But one day, he came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Amen. And they cried out to him. He's the king. Hosanna. And all of that good stuff. They took off their clothes and laid them on the ground and laid branches on the ground. And we still observe Palm Sunday where this is what they were doing, but a short time later, they were all crying, crucify him. <coughs> he was an un unusual king. They accused him of being a king. They asked him, are you the king? He said, that's what you say. So, that was the king. They nailed this king to a cross. They, they heard it made a rugged old cross. You know, they didn't have Home Depot there. So you couldn't go and buy no fine lumber unless somebody was hired to put it together. But this was a quick job. And so they hurry up and put together this old rugged cross. They were in such a hurry they couldn't find but three nails <laughs> to nail it with. And so they, but before they did that, before they did that, they really mistreated him. They kind of treated him bad. They, 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 they arrested him falsely and they tried him from took him from judgment hall to judgment hall and 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 and, and you know they, they they even when I was young I the very first thing when I heard about that I heard I said they spit on him and said yeah they spit on him. I said man alive that's trouble 
Why would they spit on the king? Why would they spit on God? Why would they spit on the son of God? What's wrong with these folk? Well, he was the king. He was the king. And when it didn't work out well, and they took him to one magistrate, and they couldn't find nothing wrong with him. And so that particular magistrate said, bring me some water. Let me wash my hands. I don't want to be guilty of the blood of this man. Give him back. He gave him back to him, and they said, do with him what you will. And so they beat him. <coughs> All night, I'm told, with what's called a scourge, a leather whip with several, with nine pieces of leather on the end and a handle. And they would put pieces of metal and glass. And so when they struck him, it tore the skin. So this king bled. He bled profusely. They beat him all night. They tried to kill him. But beating him all night didn't kill him. Yeah, but pretty soon what they did, they said, well, we're going to string him up. And so they took that old rugged cross that they put together and nailed him to the cross. They dropped him low and stretched his arms out wide. Took that old Roman hammer and that Roman nail and put it in the right hand. Took that old Roman hammer and took the Roman nail and put it in the left hand. Because they were short of nails, it took one nail and ran it through his feet and attached to them that old rugged cross. Then they dropped him in the hole, and he hung there between two thieves. So the whole idea was that they were treating him like a thief. They, 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 you know, they said, you, you know, uh, there was an old saying, um, uh, uh, I had a neighbor one time that was chastising their child. And the other neighbor said, yeah, they whooping that boy like he stole something. So they whipped him like he stole something. Amen. And 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 then and 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 then they, they had him to carry the cross up to a hill called Kel. It was known by Golgotha or Skull Hill and some other name. It was a bad place to be. You didn't want to be anywhere near that place. But this is why they took him up there. They had him to carry that old rugged cross up here. Now, 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 in, in once again, in, in memory of black history, they tell me that there was a man, when he stumbled under the weight of that heavy cross, they, they picked another man and had him carry the cross for him. They tell me that that was a black man. They, uh, see, see, we got some history. We got some history. You know, when, when we think that, and there are other states that our history only go back to slavery. But our history goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 10, where it said Nimrod was a mighty warrior whose father was named Cush. Evidently, he was a black man. By all the standards, he was a black man. You know, the way they used to have it in the early days to keep us subjected they said, oh, if you got one ounce of blood, you black. If you got black DNA, you black. So if the Cush, if Cush had a son, and Cush was black, his son had to be black. His son had to be black. We, we, there's no doubt about it. And so it was that even this king, this unusual king went in a, in a fashion the way that the rest of the kings did because all of the rest of the kings died. All of the rest of the king's reign came to an end. But this unusual king died. The others died, but they still did. If they were in the grave, they still, the bodies are still in the grave. 
But this unusual king, when they got through putting him through the torture that they put him through, and the final thing that they did was pierce him in the side. And he had a few things to say while he was on that cross. One of the things he said was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then finally, he hung his head in the shoulder and he gave up the ghost. He died on that cross. He was a king, but he died on that cross. They had even fashioned a little sign above him that said, King of the Jews. They did it in more than one language, but they were saying King of the Jews, but they weren't hailing him as king. They were mocking him as king. But you got to watch out who you mock. Amen, because it might fall back on you someday. And so we got this king. He did all good things. He wasn't like Manasseh. He wasn't even like David. He was better than any king that ever came. And so what happens is he hung his head and the locks of his shoulder and he gave up the ghost. Oh, yes. And the devil and his people had a party. They thought everything was okay. We ain't got to worry about this fella no more. He's in the grave. But early on Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. He got up with all power. When they went to look for him, he wasn't there. But he was gone. But let me tell you, he was seen by a lot of people. Before he went back to glory, he was the king. He is the king. He will forever be the king. Unlike the rest of the kings, that's not coming back. But he's going to reign forever. And so, if you remember the scripture that we read in our text, talking about whether or not you went to visit somebody in the hospital, whether you fed somebody when they were hungry, all of those things. That's the words of the king. He's going to judge the righteous. He's going to be king of the kingdom. We're going to be his subjects. Well, you say, well, now, ah, ah, ah. he didn't have a wife. How can I be a king? Sure. But he said he's got power. When he rose up, he had all power. So he has enough power, oh Lord, to make you the heir to that kingdom. I'm looking forward to the time when I can be a part of that kingdom. I ain't worried about the kingdom down here. I ain't worried about England. I'm not worried about the United States even. All this going to go away. We're going to have a king, a great king. King that loves me and the king that loves you. And a God to glorify. For the scripture said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That king is going to be with that king. He's going to rule forever. about the king. They're just an ordinary king. But the king I know is an unusual king. His name is Jesus. God bless you. Thank God for 
Reverend Porter and that powerful message that he has given us today. It is decision time now. I'd like for you to stand with me. Some would say we're opening the doors of the church, but we don't have the power to do that. But one day, the man that Porter was talking about opened up the doors when he said, whosoever will, let him come. When he opened them, no man was able to close them. And one day he will come again and he will close those same doors. And no man will be able to open them. It's decision time. If you're here and you're not in a validated relationship with the Lord, this is your opportunity. If you're here and you're struggling with some issues that nobody sees, 